I am Joaquin Oliver. I was also a teenager when I was killed in this year's shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High. I was one of 17 people who died in that school on that day. In six minutes, the shooter used an AR-15 to kill 14 students and three staff members. These weapons have no place in the hands of private citizens. Do we really need to go over this again? Non-gang, non-other crime, mass shootings are a minute minority of gun deaths in this country. Talking about banning AR-15s to prevent mass shootings is like focusing diligently on someone's microaggressions while on a battlefield. It is self-sacrificing and not very useful. Let's go over a non-tyrant-inspired statistic, which may be different than what you've yet heard. 98 0.4% of non-gang, non-other crime mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. Let that sink in. Gun-free zones are targets. Big targets. The target. Gun-restricted zones would inspire a lot less confidence, and with good reason, in the killer. What we have to do is be able to defend against sick people, tyrannical regimes, and gangs of people who are trying to steal your stuff. These weapons should be banned. Brett Kavanaugh does not agree. That's because his job is to follow and enforce the existing law and not to change the law. He is not an activist judge. He is a just judge. It is the role of Congress to make and alter laws. He argued that banning assault weapons is the same thing as banning our free speech. False. He argued that banning assault weapons was like banning free speech because it is an enumerated amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the supreme law of our land. And we are a nation of laws because we are a civilized nation. A civilization. He argued that banning assault weapons is unconstitutional. He was the minority then. He even called himself a lonely voice. But what will happen if he's confirmed to the Supreme Court? What will happen when Brett Kavanaugh becomes the majority? Contextually, literally absolutely nothing. But you know what your state and locality can do about 98.4% of school shootings. What will happen is that we will become more like that constitutional democratic republic that was defined at the outset of our nation, where very wise people who had studied history created a system that would, if preserved, not devolve into tyranny, not devolve into a corrupt, dysfunctional, overly powered central government. It would be a land of diverse states so that the experiments that are brought upon us through the process of democratic voting would not kill the whole organism. It will only kill a portion of the organism, and we could learn by the example of the states of what works and what doesn't work. We would have a lawful land and a republic. I'm Jane Doe. When I was 17, I crossed the border. I was 17 when I was detained. I was 17, and soon I would learn that I was, I was pregnant. And after they examined me, I asked for an abortion. I made my decision, I said, but they said that I couldn't. They tried to change my mind. They tried to stop me. The Trump administration tried to stop me. Brett Kavanaugh tried to stop me. He tried to delay my decision. Wow, this one is really bad. Okay, there was an instance where a 15 weeks pregnant girl crossed the border and she wanted to get an abortion. They were trying to figure out whether or not she should go to an abortion clinic or a pregnancy crisis center. They weren't even trying to figure out whether or not taxpayers and citizens were obligated to pay for the illegal immigrants medical services. And ultimately the courts delayed her, yes, while they were deciding. So she ended up coming up here and she got her free abortion from the taxpayers. And that is is what she's referencing. Do you catch on how they're trying to deceive you? It's amazing. Pandora's box, keep an eye out. This happens all the time. They're good at this stuff. But what will happen if he's confirmed to the Supreme Court? What will happen when Brett Kavanaugh becomes the majority? I am Laura Packard. I was diagnosed with stage four cancer a year ago. I'm in remission now. The Affordable Care Act saved my life. 
Before the ACA, I couldn't get good health care coverage. And now, I have a pre-existing condition. But the Trump administration says that the ACA's protections for pre-existing conditions should be ruled unconstitutional. And Brett Kavanaugh says that a president should be able to ignore a law if he deems it unconstitutional. Okay, here's how it works, Pumpkin. If a law is unlawful, then what you need to do is not follow that law. And if they try to take you to court, you can argue that the law is unlawful. That's how the system works. If it weren't for that choice of behavior and that aspect of the system, then they could make unlawful laws all over the place and we would extremely quickly fall into an abyss of tyranny. When a case about the ACA was before the DC Circuit, he was in the minority. What will happen if he's confirmed to the Supreme Court? What will happen when Brett Kavanaugh becomes the majority? We know what will happen. We know what will happen to women, to immigrants, to workers, to voters, to people with pre-existing conditions. They might just start paying their share. I'm not going to say fair share because it is not fair. We have a crony capitalist system and a litigious society of people who are not strong, self-sufficient, and proud, generally speaking. We have health costs which have skyrocketed from 5% GDP to 17.4% GDP, and that is with our inflated and now bogus modified GDP calculation, in which natural disasters add to and do not detract from gross domestic product calculations. Do these types of lamentations reach your TV screen? No, they do not. To children with disabilities, to parents who worry about whether their kids will come home from school alive, we know what will happen because Brett Kavanaugh has shown us what will happen. He sure has, and she sure has not. So pay attention to what he has done and not what these corporate talking heads and tools tell you. Brett Kavanaugh will hurt us. So the question becomes, who will he help? Donald Trump. Donald Trump is currently under investigation, and he's not happy about it. He doesn't seem to want to be interviewed by special counsel Mueller. And if he gets subpoenaed, his team has said that he will try to quash it. And if that happens, the Supreme Court will have to make a decision. Brett Kavanaugh is a strong supporter of the executive branch. He's even appeared to argue that Congress should bar the prosecution of a sitting president. This is what they call fake news again. It's not a lie, but it is intentional manipulation of words in order to deceive a less than computer accurate human brain. Now, this is something that sounded so implausible that I didn't believe it. And hopefully someday you will know enough to get a red flag when somebody says, says something like this. This is a misleading, carefully worded misrepresentation here of Judge Kavanaugh's writings during the beginning of the Obama administration, I should add. He was actually reflecting on the abuses of President Bill Clinton. Kavanaugh was actually defending Clinton against this onslaught of silly litigious stuff and the distractions of the functions of the presidency due to the pretty silly, relatively speaking, litigation that was going on with regard to Paula Jones at the time. When there is a giant target and it is disrupting the job of the presidency, then that's an issue. And what Kavanaugh was arguing was that perhaps it is best to let Congress be the ones involved in the persecution of the president so that litigious actors, of which there are so many, can't just have the upper hand on a presidency and distract from policy and carrying out the job of the presidency, which interestingly appears to be what's going on right now. Right now, there are forces at play here that they aren't going to tell you on the mainstream, unquestioning, unthinking media. They don't have solid debates on the mainstream media. They don't have honest discussions about opposing points of view. It is not a source of information that you should be paying attention to. These giant corporate news organizations are not there innocently. Who will Brett Kavanaugh help? He will help Donald Trump. But. Brett Kavanaugh is not the majority yet. We are the majority. We are the majority of Americans who believe a woman should be able to choose to have an abortion. If you'll notice, Kavanaugh 
and Trump did not try to argue against choice. Do not conflate choice of employer to respect their own personal religion and not pay for abortions with banning abortions. We are the majority of Americans who believe that assault weapons should be banned. Oh, is that right? News.gallup.com Hmm, majority of Americans oppose assault weapon ban. Okay, is that because you took a CBS poll directly after the Orlando shooting? We are the majority of Americans who believe that a person with a pre-existing condition should be covered. At the same price as everyone else, without the input of the consumers or the insurance companies compelling them to run business in the way that the government dictates. The so-called sinister Kavanaugh and Trump appear to be of the opinion that insurance companies may charge people who are less expensive less money in order to save those people money. Even if you know nothing about our laws, but you understand that this was a country of individualism and personal strength and liberty, then you should be able to understand that this is the more plausible interpretation of the law. We have the power to stop Brett Kavanaugh. I know we do, but we have to call our senators. It's not yet a done deal, so we have to bang down their doors and share our stories because we are all Jane Doe. We are all Joaquin Oliver. We are all Laura Packard. And so many more of us are vulnerable if Brett Kavanaugh is in the majority on the highest court of the land. Pretty much everyone, except Donald Trump. We have the power to stop him. We have the power to block Kavanaugh. We have to say, not in our name. Let's get to work.